These will be the notes for Wednesday, November 10th. So let's page ahead and see what we have to open. On Wednesday, you'll need your digital notebook open, your vocabulary sheet open, and your proofs with reasons document. So remember, if you've been closing those tabs, we'll hop in here to chapter four and make sure you open those first three, okay? So let's go hop on to our notes first. So we'll be on page 18 or slide 18. And we're going to be again showing triangles are congruent, but this time we're gonna use what's called the side angle side congruence theorem or postulate. Yesterday we learned a method where we said, you know what, you don't need to get all six pairs of corresponding parts the same, three pairs of sides and three pairs of angles. We said it's fine just to get side, side, side and no angles. So let's make that kind of big. And I like to highlight them so they stand out when I'm taking a quiz. Okay, and we had some main reasons from our reason sheet and the biggest one was the reflexive property. That a side is itself. We use that when they share a side or sometimes I say when they're butting up against each other. The other one that we used was definition of a midpoint. And again, you can always pause to catch up with your typing. If we're told something's a midpoint, we know that it will be splitting it into two equal pieces because it's in the middle. So if to the left of it is three, to the right of it is also three in length. Another thing we used was our right triangles, but that's not as common. So I'm actually going to think I'm going to take those two off. Um, reflexive and definition of a midpoint are our main ones for showing or adding our brain to a picture to get some unmarked sides the same. Now we're going to have a new method that's called side, side, side. It's side included angle side, though. We're going to abbreviate it SAS. And that's perfectly allowed in your proofs to just write SAS. I will know exactly what you're talking about. So we'll go highlight that as well. So an included angle is one where when you grab a side and you walk to the next mark thing, you say side, angle, side. So like when you say what they are, these three in a row go side, angle side. It's the one smashed between or included between the two sides. So let's hop on our vocabulary sheet, see if we have included angle on here. Looks like we might need to add that one. All right, actually I've got included side there, included angle. You know what, let's do right here. Use when you get two sides and the angle between them, which is the included angle, congruent. All right. So if we had this pair of sides with one and this pair of sides, and then over here, the sides with two dashes, the included angle would be angle C. So there, that'll cover both of them, okay? Included angle and the side angle side. So right here, remember our congruence statements? We would say triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle, and then we have to make sure we match those corresponding parts. So A has a single arc, and so we'd have to start with R, the other one that has a single arc. I listed A down to B. B is the one along the road with one dash on it. So from R, I'm gonna take the road over to s and then i'll end 
with Q. So those parts and those angles have to match up when you write your congruence statement. And we would say by side included angle side. Let me show you the animation for that. Thought I had it open, but apparently not, so I'm just going to open it up. These are from um, a program called CK12, which they have good animations for their geometry. So then I don't have to try to do it myself. So I'm going to hop down to where they have an animation. Right here, I'm going to give it a try. And you can do it on your own too if you'd like, but or just watch. So when I have my side AB congruent to side ZY, single dash, likewise XZ congruent to AC, the angle smashed between the two is angle A and over here angle Z. And you'll see that that's enough for me to turn and lay the red one on top of the blue one and I get all the other corresponding parts for free. And so I'd have all the parts the same, which means I can say the triangles are congruent by side, included angle, side. So on our next page, you'll be asked a question on your worksheet, what additional piece of information do you need to get side angle side. So you have to go take a look at what you have. You have a side marked and a side marked. So what I'm going to do is go grab my line tool and say, look, they gave me a side marked, sorry, and they gave me an angle marked. So of my three pieces, I've got side and angle, but I need to make sure that that angle's included so that when I travel around, I go A to C, I'd have to not lift my pencil to keep connecting, all right? So I would have to have CB, segment CB congruent to segment. Now I have to look. I have to travel so I don't lift my pencil. L to M through angle M out to K. So it'd have to be MK. It's going to go huge on me for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that, um, but I can deal. I just like it to look nice. Actually, I think I want CB to be a little bigger. There we go. So we would say that CB would have to be congruent to MK. Let's go try the next one here on the bottom. It says, what other piece of information would we need to get these ones congruent by side, angle, side? Well, here's the problem. Not the problem, it's just a matter of fact. They only gave me the angle. So I have to add my brain to get the sides that wrap the angle. Okay, not E, B, and L, N, but the sides that when I travel, I don't lift my pencil. So I'm going to need E, L, and L, B, N, M, and L, B. Now you heard I just said that L, B both times. So we're going to add our brain to say L, B has to be congruent to, I don't think I'll use a space bar. <laughs> it's going to go, I don't know why it does that. It's going so big, but congruent to L, B or B, L. Our reason for that, remember, would be reflexive whenever they share or butt up on each other. So then by adding my brain to it, I was able to get the other side, or A side. So the only thing I'm missing is the other side, where I don't have to lift my pencil to go side, watch the cursor, B to L, angle L, and then side. So I would be need to, to be <laughs> need to be told that L E is congruent, and I'm just going to write equal here. LE is congruent to NB on the bottom. I have to be careful to it. I should actually say BN because in the congruent statement, see how it goes LE first, second? So I should go BN first, second. I don't know if they dock you for that. I'll have to ask. I, I, um, like I told you guys before, this is my first year teaching this for a long time. We used to dock for that, though, or take points off if they didn't match the parts correctly. So um, I doubt they do anymore, but just in case. So let's go on to our next one. 
right here. Those dots are up there for a reason. Again, there are, there are many reasons or properties we can use to justify some of the angles that aren't marked being um, congruent. And I've been calling that add your brain. So you're going to use stuff you've been taught to add your brain. Let's go highlight it. I've always been highlighting that statement in yellow to add our brain to the picture. All right, now watch this. We're going to use a vertical angle theorem when we have the X's here, and we've talked about that a lot, so I, I don't think we need to go create it again, but right in here, this angle isn't marked as the same as this one with the blue dot, but I know they have to be the same by the vertical angle theorem. Okay, so that's an old one. I'd say angle BXA congruent to CXD by the alternate interior angle theorem. But now another old one's coming back. We have alternate interior angles when two parallel lines, see that trigger for parallel lines, that little uh, runner on these sides? That's notation for AB is running parallel to DC. When we see that, it's a big trigger for using alternate interior angle theorems. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior are the same. So those blue ones are the same. I can make this statement that angle B to X to A is congruent to angle C to X, C to X to D. And again, it went bigger. That's so weird, but whatever. I can also, for the same reason, hop between the parallel lines on opposite sides of this transversal to say, and I would like you to make the statement next, so I'd pause the video, but we would say B to A to X is congruent to, and we'd say angle D to X to C. Let's shrink that up a little bit. So it's bugging me that it's not fitting. And our reason would be from last chapter, the alternate interior angle theorem. Let's highlight that because that's what our brain is adding to this picture right here. All right, so we would be able to get all three of those angles for free based on the information given, even though none of them were marked. So at this point, we stopped in class and went and practiced the odds on the worksheet. And then we came back to talk about some proofs. So we're going to revisit our workflow for proofs. So hop on your chapter four workflow down here and let's kind of revisit what we do. We always rewrite the given with the reason of given. Next, we add our brain to get unmarked sides and angles using the reasons above. Remember our main ones for sides are reflexive when they butt up against each other, definition of midpoint when we're told that something's a midpoint, um, we've got when we have parallel lines we sometimes do alternate interior or corresponding angles as well, but we need to add our brain to the picture. Then we need to decide if we are getting triangles congruent and later, or parts congruent. And right now we're just doing getting, we're just doing the triangles, but so I'm gonna, if you hit the little asterisk above the eight and then hit the space bar, it does a bullet by the way. So you do shift number eight and then press the space bar. So for now, if it's triangles, we have to decide whether we're going to be getting side, 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 or right now, side, angle, side. We're going to have two more in our next section and one more later on. So we're going to be adding. We're eventually going to have five little shortcuts. Um, and then we'll wait to add to that. So let's go work 
on our proofs. First of all, we need to rewrite the given. I made you a little copy of it here, though. You should just be able to slide that given off, put it right there, and let's shrink it up. X is the midpoint. Why? Because it was given. Done. That's our first step in our workflow. Now, look at nothing else was given, just that X is the midpoint, but it's the midpoint of both of these segments, which means it splits them into two equal pieces. So I'm going to go make a little line right here. And I'm going to grab it. Come on, grab it. I think I grabbed it like this. And then I'm going to copy, Command C, Command Paste. And I'm going to go mark this other piece over here, also congruent or the same length. So what do I get to state down here? I get to say that from n to x is exactly the same distance as from um, r to x. But we don't use the distances. We talk about their lengths being congruent. So let's go grab this little guy up here. Command copy, command paste, and put our segment over the top. Paste again, put another, they're kind of big, but that's okay. Also, we're going to change that equals to, again, copy, paste, a congruent symbol. Command copy, command paste. Did it go? It didn't. Command copy, command paste. There we go. It's a little awkward, but it's actually good for you to see the details that we shouldn't put those equals in when it's congruent. The segments are congruent because their lengths are the same. Now, what reason did I use? Definition, I knew what a midpoint meant of midpoint. Okay, whenever it's like, well, that's what it means. That's when you can write that. But I can also make another statement for that very same reason. I can also say that a to x is exactly the same as from g to x. And again, I should do congruent and I should put the bars over the top, but I get a two for one. So I have two pairs of matching sides, okay? I'm gonna go put little dashes on those as well. So we're gonna take out our line tool and I'm going to put a little dash here. I'm gonna copy it and paste it. I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm gonna paste it again, but I'm going to move it over here, and I'm going to paste it again. See where it went? It disappeared on me. I don't know what's going on with that. But now I have two dashes on AX and two on XG. So I have two pairs of sides the same. And what I like to do right at this point is I'm going to make a little text box here, and I'm going to go, I know I have a side and another side the same. Can I get the third pair of sides the same? Because if so, then I would go with my, move that over. I would go with my side, side, side. But there's nothing that allows me to state that AN and RG are of the same length. So now I know I have to do side, angle, side, because those are the only two we've learned. Do I know for sure that this angle in at X on a cross from the other one on the x that it makes are those the same in there in x the answer is yes and you should go oh i know that reason that's the vertical angle theorem okay cross from each other on the x so i'd say angle a x g and i'm going to put the congruent symbol in there it's congruent to angle let's match our parts a would go with g x goes with itself and N would go with R if I slid them to land on top of each other. Let's grab our congruent symbol, command copy, command paste. Let's go drag that in there. Okay, so now which triangle congruence did I get? I got side, angle, side. And the last statement is always what you're trying to prove. And I made that a slider. The triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Okay, and I'm going to repeat the process. X was a midpoint, so I knew 
nx was the same as rx. Also, it's a midpoint of this other one, so I knew ax was exactly the same or congruent to gx. So my brain added those two sides because I knew what a midpoint was. Then I went in here and said, well, the angle smashed between the sides. It's also congruent by the vertical angle theorem. So the triangles are the same by side, angle, side. Our last one. Observations. So again, what are we noticing? We've got a pair of parallel lines given. Okay, so I'm probably going to have some alternate interior. Okay, parallel lines usually mean alternate interior angle theorem to steal some angles. I also have a pair of sides marked. So right now, when I'm choosing between SSS and SAS, because those are our only two right now, we're eventually going to have five, I know it's going to be this guy because I'm going to get some angles. Okay, and there's no way to get that WZ the same as XY. So let's begin. We put our statement down because it was given, and our reason is, as always, we're going to type in there. I guess I didn't make a text box. Our reason is because, and again, you grab that T up there, it was given. Okay, now we do our workflow. We add our brain to the picture to find some missing things. Well, I see these butting up on each other, so I definitely see some reflexive going on. So I'm going to grab a text box, and I'm going to make my next statement. You guys are butting up on side XZ. You guys share that side. So I'm going to write XZ is congruent to XZ. I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to space or tab. What is that reason? In class, I would have asked them, and they would have said, when I say a side is itself, they would have said reflexive from last chapter. Then just hit the space bar. What else do I know? Those parallel lines mean that the alternate interior angles are the same. Go grab those dots and put them in there. And we're going to go mark our last statement as well. We said this XZ, I'm going to copy paste, is exactly the same or congruent to itself. So I'd have side, because they gave it to me, included angle, because they're alternate interior, side because of reflexive. So my next statement is going to be that angle W X to Z is congruent to angle. Now I have to match my corresponding parts. Look in the statement here. W goes with Y. X goes with Z. And Z goes with Y. So I've got W, X, Z congruent to Y, Z. Oops, did I do it wrong? Oh, sorry. Z goes with X. That's my angles. Why are they the same? I saw those parallel lines, which means I'm using alternate interior angle theorem. Or you can write alt int if you like that angle or you could say alternate interior angle theorem I'm fine with either so what's the last thing I'm gonna do I'm done I got side included angle side what's my reason you should think about that what am I gonna put down here for my last reason did I get side 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 nope I got side, angle smash between them, side, and we're done. So we're going to go back, and actually I think we're going to do the formative first, and then we'll go back to 4.2. So there's a formative quiz that's going to be a Google form, and then we'll go back and look at some of the odds on 4.2b. All right, have a good one.